important. Greetings, and welcome to the Southwest Church of Christ, located at 380 Franklin Avenue in Hartford, Connecticut. My name is Melvin Jones, and I am the ministering evangelist. But today, we have a special guest minister that will be preaching the engrafted word of Jesus Christ. And I pray that something will be said that will draw you a little bit closer to our Lord. Thank you very much. May God bless you all. Oh, yes, indeed. We are blessed beyond measure because Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Have you ever been feeling weary and you need a rock to hold you up? Amen. Thank God that Jesus is a rock in a weary land. So good to be here today among God's people, singing God's praises, and we are going to be the recipients of another portion of God's word. That in itself should make us say hallelujah, praise the Lord. I think, sometimes I think we don't know how blessed we are to be in the house of the Lord. Folk travel miles and miles to go to church in the first century. They didn't have trains, planes, automobiles, and Uber. And what's that other thing they got out now? You can catch a car, you can rent a car without going to Avis now. You could just, I don't know, I forgot what it's called. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You just walk up and, and, and put a code in and, and the keys are in there and you drive the car. Bring it back two hours later now. They didn't have those privileges back then. And they went through the desert, through the wilderness, crossed over terrains and valleys, walked through water just to go to church with persecution. So we are blessed beyond measure to be able to worship God freely. Amen? Amen. So good to see everybody today. Certainly appreciate all our visitors and guests. And prayerfully, we all can walk away with something that allows us to be a little stronger, that allows us to look at things with a different perspective for us to grow from faith to faith. Today I want to talk about a subject entitled Being at Peace While Being Patient. This may make more sense as we go through this lesson, but to learn to be at peace while you're being patient. Patient is bearing pains or trials and calamity without complaint. Patience is the manifestation or the forbearance under provocation or strength. Patience is not hasty nor impetuous. Patience is steadfastness in spite of opposition. It's steadfastness in spite of difficulty. It is steadfastness in spite of adversity. Patience is a virtue that the Lord wants all of his people to possess. And while we wait, the Lord wants us to be at peace while we wait for him. Amen. For there are some things that conspire to steal our joy and steal our peace. Say amen if you can. Amen. And we're trying to live right. We're trying to do the right thing. And the next thing you know, the world presents some situations that holds us captive and it holds us in fear. And now we begin to doubt. But if we keep our eyes on the world and all of its disturbances, we will certainly live in an uncertain way. So Psalms 37, it comes from the pen of King David in his older years. And through his years, he endured many difficult circumstances that caused his heart to fear. However, through those adversities, David learned some lessons about God and his faithfulness that gave him peace while he waited for the Lord to bless him. So you and I, we have the benefit of reaping a helpful harvest from King David and the lessons that he learned the hard way. So for the next few minutes, let us open our hearts, let us open our minds, and let us receive with gladness the engrafted word that has the ability to save our souls. Let's go to Psalms 37 and look at verses 1 and 2. That was so eloquently read for our hearing. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. It 
it may seem that on the surface that wicked folk are just prospering and enjoying life to the fullest while the righteous man suffers. This can cause a righteous man to fret. Fret means to grow hot and furious and become angry. Sometimes this anger is focused on the wicked man. Sometimes this anger is focused on God. And if we are not careful, we can easily be envious of somebody that's working iniquity. Right. But what do you mean by that, preacher man? Well, let's just say somebody on your job is a slacker. You have more experience, you show up at work every day, and that person gets the promotion and you don't. And now we mad at the person that got the promotion. Mad at the person that gave him the promotion. Mad at God because we didn't get the promotion. But just wait patiently and in peace because your time is coming. Whether they promote you or not, you have a reward coming. What about the atheists down the street, Brother Jones, that got more than I got? Nice house, nice car. Just wrote a check for $50,000 for his kids to go to college like it was nothing. And I got to take out all these loans. You just wait patiently for God. Don't be envious of those that work iniquity. Well, there's somebody that's using like three names and getting all these great cars and welfare checks and all this stuff from the state. And here I am, I gotta be at poverty level to get some assistance. I should be getting some assistance, but here they are, using all these last names, getting all this money, beating the system. Get all these food stamps, trading them in for money. Don't worry about those that work iniquity. You just have peace while you wait for God to bless you. The Bible says they will be cut down like grass. Usually when things or people get too high, it has to come down. Am I right about it? Babylon, the first world power, cut down. Persia, the second world power, cut down. Greece, the third world power, cut down. Rome, the fourth world power, cut down. The Tower of Babel. These men said, hey, let's build a tower up to God. Man, it was going up there. I wonder how high they really got. God had to cut them down. Saul of Tarsus was high on his horse. God had to knock him off his horse. Many athletes, movie stars, and musicians bathed in wealth, and some of them are now swimming in poverty. When, 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 when my hair gets too long, Brother Coley, I need a haircut. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Grass gets too high, got to cut it. The Bible says when the wicked are living high on the hog, they will be cut down like grass. Remember Jesus says those that exalt themselves shall be humbled, but those that humble themselves shall be exhausted. So David says exalted. I heard somebody laugh at me. That's what I meant to say. Exalted. So David says don't get caught up in the prosperity of the wicked. But David says this. And what he's saying, he says, I'm going to leave you this song because I want you to do this. Look at verse number three. David says, I'm leaving you this song because that's what I want you to do. Trust in the law and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and thou shalt be fed. There are endless benefits in trust in God. I mean complete, absolute trust in the law. To trust means to rely on somebody's integrity, their strength, their ability, and surety of a person or a thing. To have confidence, hope, and expectation of something or someone. When you trust in somebody, you believe in that person. You listen to that person. And, and, and you do whatever they recommend. Question on the floor is, can God trust you today? If you say you're going to do something for the Lord, are you going to do it at the time you're supposed to do it and the way that God designed for you to do it? God is trustworthy, but is his people trustworthy? Amen. Can we really rely on each other's integrity? If I know you say you're going to do something, can I, can I have an expectation and a hope that you're going to do it? We got to trust in God. God has all power. So have confidence in his power. Have hope in his power. 
Rely on his power. Have confidence in his power. His power is powerful. Say amen if you can. And when you trust him, he can give you power in your weakest hour. He can give you victory when you're down in the valley. Give you a different perspective when you're down in the pit. Give you strength when you're stressed out. Excitement when you're exhausted. Hope when you're heavy laden. He is able, he is able, he is able to give you peace while you wait. Because he has all power. Notice the B clause of the text. Dwell in the land. The King James Version says, feed on his faithfulness. Feed, that means like a flock grazing out in the land. When you think about a flock, if they're not going to the bathroom or mating, all they're doing is grazing. <laughs> think about it. And so the text wants us to graze on his faithfulness. All the time, we should be grazers. The Bible is telling us that we should graze on his faithfulness. Because there's an overabundance of supply of his faithfulness. Is anybody hungry this morning? Does anybody want to graze this morning? Our stomachs should be growling this morning. I'm moving over here, Facebook. Stay with me. Does anybody want to eat this morning? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yeah, yeah, look at the young people like, oh, oh. Yeah, brother, those a little bit hip. <laughs> I know what y'all be doing. Yeah, I know what that means. But let's eat up on his word, though. I know what the athletes and the rappers are doing. I know, yeah, but how about let's flip the script and graze on his word. When you feed on his faithfulness, you will always be at peace. Amen. When trouble is in my way, I'm feeding on his faithfulness. Down to my last dollar, God is good to the last drop because I'm feeding on his faithfulness. Amen. When I'm trying to get myself out of a mess, I graze on his goodness and realize that God has already got me out of the mess. I just got to wait for him to reveal it to me. Heaven has already had the, 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 the solution to our problems. We just got to wait for it. When somebody else's choices has affected my life, I need to wait on God for him to fix that thing. Because I believe we all have been affected by somebody else's choices. Don't take it out on that person. You just have peace while you wait for God to fix it. Oh, uh, y'all need to say amen. Because when somebody makes a choice and it affects our life, now, now we are messed up and mad at that person. That's a problem. It's going to happen. Somebody else is going to do something and it's going to affect you. When I have sinned against the Father, and I have become overladen with guilt. I need to graze on his faithfulness. Amen. Otherwise, I'm just going to walk around feeling guilty and, and feeling depressed because I have sinned against God. Amen. But I got to remember I'm covered by the blood so now I can have peace while I'm waiting for God to bless me. Listen, patience is more than just waiting patiently. It's all about your mindset while you're waiting. Explain that a little bit more, preacher man. Okay, I will. Thanks for asking. Listen, some people, some people, they wait and they do not show any external evidences of impatience. But yet, they are unsettled on the inside while they're waiting. But when you trust in the Lord and feed on his faithfulness, you are as peaceful on the inside as you are on the outside. Sometimes we can exhibit patience, but on the inside, man, I wish they had me up. Talking my nerves. Why did they make that choice? Now I'm all messed up. We're not saying in the front of them, but it's going on inside of them. See, it's all about what's going on up here while we wait. Yes. All right, I'm not going to display at 
work that I'm mad that I get, didn't get a promotion, but inside, I don't like nobody no more. <laughs> I ain't saying it, but I'm just saying. Y'all know how we get. We got to check ourselves. We need a check up from the neck up. That's where it stops. Because when you have true patience, listen, God patiently waits for us in a loving way. I'm grateful to God that he waited for me in a loving way. I got baptized when I was around 27, 28 years old. He patiently waited for me. He didn't say, listen, boy, you done heard this word, and you sitting around, you ain't obeyed this. What's wrong with you? Man. He patiently waited for me mm -hmm. to come to him. And I'm glad he didn't take me from this earth before I came to him. I thank God for your patience. And now that I'm trying to continue to develop, I still need his patience because I know I'm not where I should be. And so I thank God for being patient with me because I'm dealing with stuff that I probably should have overcame already. And I'm hard on myself about these things. But God is saying, I'm being patient. You, you, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Turn your Bibles to James chapter 1 real quick. Let's look at what Brother James has to say about this, this thing we call patience. See, when we dwell... In his land, and feed on his faithfulness in spite of our troubles, we can have peace in the waiting room of life. Some folks don't have peace because they ain't grazing enough. Now, in James chapter 1, let's look at verse number 2. A very familiar passage of scripture. Let's read verse 2 and 3, my brother. What does he say? My brethren. My brother, That's a generic phrase. Brothers, sisters, everybody that can hear my voice. Read. Count it all joy. Count it all joy when what? When you fall into various trials. When, when, when I can't pay my bills, I need to jump for joy. I, 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 I said, well, I don't know, bro. <laughs> See, count it all joy when these aches and pains just won't go nowhere. I'm just as giddy as I can be, and I'm hurting inside. I'm hurting on the outside. Unemployment check didn't show up this week. Can't get a job, but I'm just so happy. Family and friends have forsaken me. Somebody lied about me. Somebody done talked about my kids. Ooh, I knew it was going to be quiet right there. But the Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into what? Knowing that the testing of your faith. Hold on, hold on. When you fall into various. Fall into various trials. This, our trials various. That means that's a lot of difficulties comes in all shapes, sizes, and colors. It ain't going to be the same thing. You done got through this one thing and here comes something totally different. Various trials. All right, my smile going to get even brighter now. Lord, you patiently got me through this. But here comes something else. You got me through this last one. I know you're going to get me through this. I'm going to sing and be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to sing and be happy. Read on, brother. Verse 3. Knowing that the testing of your faith. Okay, now, all of this stuff, it tests your faith. Have we passed the test? And it's not A, B, C's, or D's. You either passed or you failed with God. Knowing that the testing of your faith, what does it do? Produces patience. See, when you go through all this stuff and, and you got peace while you're waiting patiently, it, it produces patience. It, it, God is the producer of patience. Listen, patience can be bitter at times, but its fruit is sweet. You see that? God is the producer of patience as long as you are having joyful times during your difficult times. Lord have mercy. Let, let, let me let that just marinate for a second. Because the devil is listening to this message too, and he wants to see what you're going to do with this information. Now, either by the time you leave this building, get in your car, get home, I don't know, maybe tonight, tomorrow, next week, he's going to throw something at you. And he's going to say, all right, that crazy preacher told you to be joyful. Let's see what you're going to do with this. I know what runs you the wrong way. And that's what I'm going to throw at you. Let me hear you sing, sing and be happy. Let me, let me hear you, yeah, you sing it in church. Let me hear you sing it now. That's how he works. Let's look at verse 4. Verse 4, the Bible says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. I love that. I, I, I love that so very much. 
When you delight yourself, God is going to give you the desires of your heart. If you want the desires of your heart, say amen. amen. Yes, yes, yes. What you really desire, it will be granted unto you. Now, before we get too excited about this, y'all start asking God for all kind of stuff because y'all read that he's going to give you what you desire. Let's put this in its proper perspective. Can some of y'all pray right now? Oh, Lord! <laughs> I was in the car lot the other day. <laughs> I was in Macy's Hall. <laughs> I want to take this trip. Slow your roll, just pump your brakes for a minute. Now, we got to pay close attention to the structure of this contextual section of Scripture. When you trust in the Lord, and when you do good, y'all hear me now, trust in the Lord and do good when you feed on his faithfulness, that's the seat belts, because here it comes. When you do all these things, he will regulate your desires. Oh, man. Oh, man. Your desires won't be that list of material things that your flesh desires. When you delight yourself in the Lord, you will be disposed to ask only those things that will be proper for him to grant. God has not promised to gratify all of the uh, uh, appetites of the body, but to grant all the desires of the heart. Listen, all of the cravings of a renewed, sanctified soul, he'll grant those requests. Notice I said cravings. Anybody want to eat? <laughs> crave it. See, when you crave, you crave. Is anybody craving the word of God? If you are, you'll be grazing in the word of God. I thank God for Brother Nurse. He gave us a whole uh, Bible study outline for the whole year. And I think I had maybe one or two Christians that called me, Brother Jones, it's almost February. Did you get the new one? I want, I want to stay on track. Because somebody want to graze. Amen. When you crave, you crave. You're just hungry for the word of God. So what is the desire of the heart of a good man? It's to know, to love, and to live for God. Simple as that. And when we live a dedicated, tender life, the main desire in our hearts would just be to please and glorify God. It's that simple. So instead of delighting in the things of the flesh, the righteous man is called upon to find his ultimate source of joy in the Lord. Psalm 75 says this, Psalm 73 rather, he says, Whom I have, who do I have in heaven but you? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Southwest, the greatest desire you should have is to please God. Amen. Things will not give you the peace while you wait. Materialism isn't going to give you the peace while you're waiting patiently. You know, I, I, <laughs> I'm guilty of this. It's this thing that they call retail therapy. Oh, why y'all quiet? Y'all know. I, you know, I, oh, I'm just frustrated, man. I'm going to the mall. <laughs> oh, oh, see, it don't work. Because you're going to get that credit card bill next month. And you're going to be back the person you was before. Retail therapy is not the solution. Stuff ain't going to help your situation. Listen, if we want peace while being patient, we cannot let our realities uh, affect our relationship with God and with each other. Sometimes our realities have affected our relationship with God and with each other. Because we go through stuff and we don't have no joy while we're going through stuff and then we take it out on other people. We cannot let our realities affect our relationship. We got to rise above our circumstances. That's what I said, rise above our circumstances. I like to tell the story about the eagle, because he's an amazing bird. When there's a storm and other birds are flying in the clefts of the mountains, flying out away for shelter, 
What the eagle does, he flies to the highest point of the mountain. And when the storm comes, the eagle flies right into the storm. And with his wings outstretched, the winds lift him up above the storm. And now he has risen above his circumstances. And he is just flying, and the storm is below him, and he is flying above him. Do not let your realities affect your relationship so you can rise above your circumstances. We have to understand what the purpose of our predicament is. Yeah. If you are in a situation, you need to pray and meditate. And this thing, some of us are in some long-term predicaments. Yeah. And we need to pray and ask God for wisdom. Lord, what is the purpose of this predicament I'm in? We got to utilize the power that we have through God to deal with our current position. We got to be passionate about pleasing the Father. We have to let God, listen, we have to let God take control of our environment. Y'all hear me? Let God take control of your environment. And, and, and this goes for me too. I'm always in fix it mode all the time. I'm always like, okay, thinking ahead and, and, and well, I need to do this to fix that and, 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 and like life is a chess game and I need to just stand still and see the salvation of God. Amen. And let God take control of my environment. Amen. We got to be saturated in his word to deal with our situation. Mm -hmm. Church family, it takes a trained Try and transform mind to have peace in the midst of tribulation. Amen. Train, try, and transform wow. to deal with the stuff we have in life. Now I can have peace while I wait for God to bless me. Amen. And have the right mindset while I'm waiting. Some of us wear that stuff on the exterior and we want everybody to know we're going through something. But God said, no, 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 no. Wipe that frown off your face. Pharisees was, was dealing with these issues about uh, fasting. And, and, and some of the hypocrites, when they fast, they would put like ashes on their face and walk around all sad. And everybody knows, yeah, I'm fasting. Five hundred. I want to graze on some grub right now. Man. Just fasting. Jesus says, no, clean yourself up. Put a smile on your face. Nobody should know that you are fast. Nobody should know what you are going through. How are you going to be influential when you're walking around all oh, woe is me? How are you going to be influential when your, when your situations have controlled your whole disposition? Folk need to see that, man, even though you're going through stuff, you still got a smile on your face. That's influence. When you and I feed on his faithfulness, listen, when we graze on God's goodness, we can quietly endure and silently suffer while we wait on the Lord. Y'all hear that? Quietly endure and silently suffer. Nobody ain't got to know. Yeah, ask for prayer for your, your situation, but you, you, you ain't going to know I'm going through anything. Because I'm waiting patiently in peace. So, with that said, if I suffer silently, I can serve when I'm sad. Say amen if you can. Amen. I can go the extra mile when I'm going through something. I can fellowship after being forsaken. I can be there for somebody even though nobody was there for me. I can build up somebody while I'm all broken down. I can strive while I'm struggling. I can, I, I can worship while I'm waiting. I can praise his name while I'm in pain. Amen. I'm talking about having peace while you patiently wait. Amen. Lord, thank you for your intervention. For now I can have insight when I deal with my issues. Yes. Church, I'm talking about having peace while being patient. Amen. Notice verse 5. If you... Uh, Look at verse 5, and you can flip your devices over to the NIV. I'm going to remind you another verse, but if you got the NIV, listen to this. Commit 
said, thy ways to the Lord. Trust in him, and he shall bring it to pass. The NIV, the NIV said, trust in him, and, and he will do it. All right, so, in conclusion this morning, we're going to deal with this last verse in this message of Jesus. We are told to commit. That word commit in Hebrew means to roll on to. The meaning makes no sense in a way when we just look at it from an exterior. But it makes a lot of sense when you look at the context of this passage. The idea is that instead of worrying and fretting, the righteous man should learn to cast his burdens on the Lord and trust him to take care of his matters in his own way and in his own time. This idea is repeated all through the Bible. In Proverbs 16 and 3, the Bible says, Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. Psalm 52, 55, and 22 says, Cast your burdens on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Commit thy way to the Lord. Roll your stuff over to God. When you roll it over, you're going to have some peace. But if you don't do no rolling, and if you don't do no grazing, ain't going to be no peace. We must roll it off ourselves so as not to afflict or perplex ourselves with thoughts about future events. Think about that. Don't we afflict ourselves and perplex our mind about what we think might happen tomorrow or the next day? Dress rehearsal for a tragedy. But where's the trust? When we worry, there's a lack of trust. You're saying that, God, I'm, I'm so messed up about this, man. I, I don't know if you can deal with that. I'm in a mess, God. And then we go about our way of trying to fix it ourselves. We go about our way. We ain't even acknowledging God through the process. And where's our trust? We are not to cumber ourselves with trouble. But roll it over to God so we can have peace. Now, this promise is conditional. We must commit and trust. And listen, the Bible says he will do it. You know what, church? There's this saying that's been popping up lately, mostly through black churches. And, 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 and the saying basically is that after we get a blessing from God or after God has answered our prayers and we've seen the power of God, we say, won't he do it? Amen, y'all. Won't he do it? Hey, let's do something real quick. When I point to y'all, I want y'all to say, won't he do it? I just got a job when I was down to my last dollar. Won't he do it? The doctor said no, but Jesus said yes. Won't he do it? The Lord got revenge on my enemies. I ain't have to do nothing but pray for them fools. Won't he do it? Through the power of the Holy Spirit, I keep the habit that was kicking me. Won't he do it? Amen. I've been, I've been pain-free after being a long period of being painful. Won't he do it? I'm blessed. My kids are blessed. My family is blessed. My church is blessed. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Just trust in the Lord and do good. Amen. And he'll do it. We do our peace while being patient. We won't be short-tempered with each other. Patience is the ability to count down before you blast off. Sometimes, y'all, we just got to, oh, this person just done. Take me off to the highest of activity. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, three, two, one. Patience says, count down before you blast off. <laughs> Patience with others is love. Patience with yourself is hope. Patience with God is faith. God has been patient with us. And we have to be patient with each other. Amen. God is patiently waiting for somebody today to give their life to him. We don't know how much time we have. But every day we wake up, he's exhibiting his patience once again. He wants somebody to come to him through faith by hearing the word of God. 
He wants to come to, he wants you to come to him by faith. He wants you to hear his word. He wants you to believe this word. He wants you to come to him with all your heart and repent of your sins and say, you know what? I'm going to live for Jesus. He wants you to come to him by faith and, and, and confess the sweetest name that man has ever known, man has ever mentioned. And that's Jesus is the Son of God. He wants you to come to him by faith and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. If you trust God and you really love God, you want to please God. And it will be pleasing if you came to Jesus today and was baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Jesus is patient. God is patient. He's patient with his people. He's waiting for somebody to repent. He's patient with us because there are some things that we do that we shouldn't do and some things that we shouldn't do that we do. And he's patiently waiting for somebody to be uh, 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 have a renewed mind. He's waiting and patiently for somebody to repent and change their life. Is it you today? Is it me today? He's patiently waiting for somebody today to have a change of heart and a change of mind so they can have some peace while they wait patiently for his blessing. If you stand in any of those categories, we're going to sing a song. And if it has hit you in a certain way, you just need to come forward and let, I, let, you, let us know what your needs are. Whether you want to rededicate your life, whether you want to be baptized, today could be your day. Because we don't know what tomorrow has. Amen. We just don't know. So we pray that somebody will come today. The water is ready. The garments are ready. Is your heart ready to be given over to God today? I pray that it is. As together we stand and have a closing song. We want to thank you so very much for tuning in today. We pray that something was said in this message that will cause you to make alterations in your life, that will cause you to think things through and have a different perspective. For the word of God is power. The word of God is truth. Please tune in again next week as we continue to preach God's word. And we just pray that lives are touched and souls are saved. Thank you very much, and may God bless you all.